You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Let's go, let's go. It's time to get in the zone. The Friday night lights are on. We got Justin Glenn as your host. Down to the whistle so close. Here come the highlights of the show. I'm just going to go out there and play, not worry about whether it's my last ride or not. I just have a good feeling that the atmosphere is going to be amazing. We're playing really well, and we're going to be playing a good team this week. We see what they want to try to do, and we try to take that away. We're just trying to have our team just play for each other as much as they can. We want to make a deep turning run. We've said that's been our goal from day one. Uh, we have to learn how to play in a big game, and, and we're looking forward to it. It'll be a lot of fun Friday night. Friday nights in the zone. Friday nights in the zone. Friday nights in the zone. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh man, it is only fitting that the courtyard is where we're going to crown the king of the Northeast State. Welcome to the final Friday night of the regular season here on the Highlight Zone. And man, what a way to go out. A lot of conference titles already wrapped up coming into the night, but not so in the NE8. We're talking about your Highlight Zone Game of the Week with Josh A and maybe even the Game of the Year. Hmm, Josh, here you well, go. Well, Glenn, coming into tonight, both Columbia City and Norwell undefeated in Northeast A play. That's setting up a winner-take-all head-to-head showdown for the conference crown. The Eagles looking for their first conference title since 2010. As for the Knights, their first since 2009. Columbia City at Norwell, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Norwell coming in with the number one defense in the state. Now the Knights giving up just an average of three and a half points per game. Columbia City does strike first with a field goal, but midway through the first quarter, it's a double dose of Bailey as it like Bailey to his younger brother Cohen. That one, a 74 yard touchdown. Norwell taking an early seven to three lead. And after a blocked punt by the Knights, Leighton Bailey, this time calling his own number as he dives through the goal line. Norwell taking a 14 to six lead at the half. Now, here's where things start to get a little more interesting. We pick it up early in the third quarter as Columbia City's Ethan Sievers getting on the loose with the reverse. This one, a 50-yard touchdown, but Norwell is able to score 10 unanswered to take a 24-12 lead entering the final quarter. Now, Columbia City not going away quietly as Josh Arns able to punch his way in through the goal line. It's a 24-19 game with seven minutes to go. Eagles standing strong defensively. They get the ball back with less than two minutes to go. Colton Piper finding Seavers and Seavers shaking, faking, and able to nearly get through to the goal line. Instead, he's brought down inside the five, but they're not. His teammate Josh Arntz is able to finish the job as he crosses the goal line, and that is the game-winning touchdown. Columbia City stuns Norwell 25-24 to win the NE8 championship. We knew we were going to do it. Uh, we've been fighting all year, practicing hard. We just came out ready to compete. We knew we just had to play it smart and use our weapons. Everything was just going on. We had to keep persistent, keep going, never give up. You know, you just have to put everything on the line when the moment is rough. You, you just can't give up. Norwell, well, is one whale of a team. They're gonna go far in 3A. They're gonna go. They're gonna go far in 3A. And I'm just proud to be in a conference that can produce a conference championship game. It's 25 to 24 with this much excitement. And just, I'm just proud of our community. Next up, Columbia City opening sectional play on the road at Wayne while Norwell is at Heritage. Glenn, take it away. Yeah, you'll want to check out that whole Brett Fox interview. We've already posted it on Twitter. It is great stuff. Hey, sticking with the NE8 DeKalb, bringing its high-powered offense to Lions Field for a date with Leo. We mentioned that offense was high-powered. Part of the reason is Derek Overbay, maybe the area's best tight end. He hauls one in, but it's 27 Leo in the third. However, DeKalb chipping away. A few plays later, Tegan Irk. To Donnie Wiley. Wiley had that wrist issue early on the season. It's a touchdown 27 17 now. Later in the third, Kyler Decker to Brock Shot. And speaking of uh, big talented tight ends, this guy's the next one from the Fort Wayne area. Shot with a big reception down the sideline for a nice gain. Same drive, fourth quarter now. Who else but Shot from Decker? It's a touchdown. Max Leffler. A school record 301 rushing yards for Leo as Leo takes care of the Barons 41 to 17. At Huntington North, the Vikings trying to slow down the dynamic offense of Milan Graham and the New Haven Bulldogs. Easier said than done. This is New Haven's Donovan Williams 
to Braylon Spencer for a touchdown and New Haven up 14 to six in the third. However, Luke Toish on the handoff here, he would plunge into the end zone, breaking the plane right there, and we're now knotted at 14 all. However, New Haven more than just Mylon Graham, we know that. You're gonna see Trey Barnes with a 58 yard touchdown reception. Of course, it's Donovan Williams uh, with a 58 yard touchdown, I should say. And New Haven wins on that uh, beautiful new turf, that great new stadium at Huntington North. 32-21, your final. The last stop in the Northeast State, Bob Worthman Stadium. Belmont still looking for that elusive first win. Would they get it against East Noble? It was close early. First quarter action, East Noble running the football with Michael Mosley. He's in for the 11-yard score, and it's 7-0 East Noble right out of the gate. However, Belmont, they can run the football mainly with this guy, Isaac Bodkins. He's been doing it for Nick Hall's team all season long. It's a touchdown. We're tied at 7 early. Second quarter. East Noble going to the air, Xander Brazel to David Sturdivant. That's a touchdown. East Noble takes a 14-7 lead. And I mentioned it was close early, but East Noble pulls away late. 49-7, your final down in Decatur. In the SAC, Carroll already clinched the victory bell. The Chargers looking to finish the regular season undefeated with a win at Wayne. After a Deontay Williams interception, Christian Trimble to Harold Mack for a touchdown. They go for two. Wayne gets it. The Generals up 8-0 in the early going. However, the Chargers, they settle in at Wayne Manor. It's uh, Mr. Jimmy Sullivan taking it in himself. Jimmy, football with the touchdown, but Wayne's still up 8-7. Later, you're going to see Sullivan in the second quarter finding Hanson Hafner, H squared with the TD to put the Chargers up. Uh, Carroll goes on to win 45-8, so the Chargers do finish the regular season undefeated. Thoughts, though, out to Wayne's Jacob Sharon, who was carted off with an injury early in this one. We certainly hope for a great recovery for him. A classic matchup at Spooler Stadium. We got Lowers, we got Snyder. The Panthers still number one in the state in the IFCA's 5A poll. First play from scrimmage, they show you why. It's Luke Hoffert to Kamari Juarez, and all Juarez does is score touchdowns. Kamari Juarez, 80 yards to the house, and one play in, 7-0. Snyder in the lead, a picture perfect start, you might say. Fourth and seven at midfield for Lures on the next drive. They go for it, but it's intercepted by Brandon Logan, who's going to play college baseball at Vanderbilt. That's pretty impressive. And then ensuing drive, you'll see Hoppert find Juarez for another touchdown. Hoppert 12 and 19 for 248 and three TDs. Snyder looking good heading into the postseason. They win this one over Lures 52 to seven. At Shields Field, Dwenger looking to build some momentum before the playoffs. We got cuties out there. The Saints hosting the Northrop Bruins. Second quarter action. Owen Zimmerman at quarterback to the big guy, Preston Ross. That would set up this. It's a 28-yard field goal by Joseph Moran. 24-7, the Saints in the lead. Bruins trying to get something going late in the second quarter. It's Keon Bates looking for Matt Morgan, and I swear Matt Morgan does this every single week. A big contested catch from Morgan. Great play there, but the Bruins would fumble and Dwenger would recover later on that drive. 20 seconds before the half, how about Braxton Burmis to Ross for the touchdown. 31-7 at the half as Dwenger goes on to beat the Bruins 45-20 your final. At Northside, the Legends hosting Concordia. Northside looking to finish the regular season 7-2. Seven, seven would be their most wins since 2013. Bodie Dickerson trying to make sure that does happen. The QB keeper for a touchdown. And the Legends up 6-zip. How about John Tate Lambert? What a season this guy has had at the running back position for Northside. Lambert goes in for the touchdown here. Lambert would pass 1,700 rushing yards this season. You're going to see him with another long touchdown run coming up here. That would break the previous Northside school record of almost 1,600 yards set by Tim Hines back in 1980. A 42-yard record, 42-year record, I should say, broken by John T. Lambert tonight. Northside wins 48-21. Lambert will certainly put some more yardage on in the postseason. 
Final stop in the SAC, Homestead and Southside. James Macon and Justice Haley, the co-interim coaches for the Archers, is Guy Lee stepping down earlier this week for health reasons. Cam Johnson, he looks pretty healthy. It's a touchdown run in the first quarter. 14 zip Homestead. Johnson 14 carries a buck, 43 TDs. Later, going to the air are the Spartans. It's Peyton Slavin to big Grant Leaper. The first of two touchdowns for Leaper on the game. 21-0, Sparty in the lead. How about some defense from Homestead? You're going to see Wyatt Little on the deep ball. Intercept it. Gets a nice return here. Unfortunately, would step out right there. Or maybe, maybe we'd have a pick six. But steps out of bounds. However, the Spartans take control. You're going to see Peyton Slavin in the second quarter to Manny Rivera for a touchdown. Homestead no problem with Southside, 49-6 the final at Jack Weicker Stadium. Well, that does it for the SAC and the Northeast State, but coming up with the playoffs around the corner, Adam Central is looking to make it back to Lucas Oil Stadium this fall. But first things first, would they finish the regular season undefeated after a road trip to Woodland? We've got the answer to that. And the last Friday night, last Friday night, Eastside clinching the NECC small division title outright. Angola doing the same thing in the big division tonight. Those two division champs squaring off at the Hive in Steuben County, plus a huge TRC showdown at Southwood. All that and more next in the zone. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the highlights on that lane 15. Yeah! Tonight, enjoy it. Enjoy it because you've created lifelong memories with the guy next to you because you poured your heart and soul into this team. So go out there and let it loose. Let it loose. Enjoy one last night of wearing the black and gold, pouring your heart and soul into each other and to the game that you've been playing. All right? Can't wait to watch. Can't wait to watch. Uh, that was head coach Kurt Tippman of Snyder. Check out more behind the scenes with Coach Tippman Wednesday at 6 in the Highlight Zone 2 Minute Drill. Meanwhile, Angola clinching the NECC Big Division title last week, first time since 2018. Angola clinching the Small Division title last week, their fourth in a row. So, division champs going head-to-head -head for NECC bragging rights on the final Friday of the regular season. Pick this one up in the first quarter. It's the ground and pound of the Blazers. Dax Holman with a two-yard touchdown to stake Eastside to a seven-zip lead. More from Eastside in the second quarter. Andy Thomas wondering how to stop this run game. Well, they may have slowed down Holman, but they don't stop Carson Jacobs. A 15-yard touchdown to make it 14-zip. And Eastside goes on the top Angola by a final of 28-7. to In Turtletown, Cheryl Busco coming in 6-2. The Eagles 14th in the 2A state poll. Busco hosting Fairfield. This is Riley Burroff finding Cameron Rinker for a touchdown right in your living room there. 7-0, Busco in the lead. Second quarter action, Wyatt Marks with a 10-yard touchdown plunge, and Busco up 14-0. Fairfield would get on the board here. It's Carter Kitson to Coed Carter for a touchdown. It's a nice pitch and catch, but Busco rolls 35-14 over the Falcons. Moving on at Memorial Field in Garrett, the railroad is closing things out against Central Noble. And Garrett in the third quarter looking good. It's Robert Koski with the short touchdown. Koski, a big night, 202 yards on the ground for him. 34-7 Garrett. And then more from the Garrett ground game. Xavier Nussbaum with a first down here. And later on the drive, they reward the young sophomore Nussbaum. Watch the block here from Koski to free him. Boom! Nussbaum with the touchdown. Show off the gun, son. Yeah. Garrett, roll big train. They win it 40-23. In the ACAC, Adam Central looking to finish undefeated in the regular season. The Jets facing certainly an improving Woodland team. Adam Central's Ryan Tester in the first quarter around the corner and in. It's 7-0. Jets flying high early. Woodland. Trying to get something going, but that AC defense, pretty good. It's Zach Worm pouncing on a, a recovery for AC. If you don't know Worm, he's a heck of a player. Later, it's Tester for the touchdown. This makes it 14-0, and Adam Central finishes 9-0 in the regular season, 42-7, the final at Epsler Field. 
Conference title on the line in the TRC, a win by Tippy Valley, and the Vikings finish the season undefeated and win the conference championship outright, a win by Southwood, and the Knights would earn a share of the crowd. First quarter action, that was Cole Weiner to Will Weiner. Great grab right there for the Knights. But coming the other way, you'll see Cody Eastgate to Marcus Bernicki. Nice little pitch and catch. Then in the second quarter, it's Tippy Valley's Dalton Alber. Big fullback with a touchdown here to get Tippy Canoe Valley into the end zone. But Southwood pulls this one out 28 to 26. The Knights and Vikings split the conference title three ways with Rochester. Last stop of the night, an NLC showdown in Middlebury. Six and two Warsaw, five and three Northridge. The Tigers on the first possession having trouble hanging on to the football. It's recovered by Jay Michelson and the guys in green in business. They would take advantage with Northridge. This is Cade Carrington to Jethro Hostetler. That's a touchdown, and it's 7-zip Northridge on a 27-yard strike. But German Flores Ortega, the first of his five TDs to tie a school record. Warsaw wins 35-21. Your gem of the night is up next. Last week, it was a little bit of trickeration taking home the Highlight Zone's top honor as Carol running the hook and ladder to perfection. We're talking Jimmy Sullivan to Cam Hirschberger to Nate Starks for six. Now, that gem of the night helping the Chargers beat Concordia to clinch the SAC title. So, what do we have in store this week? It is your week nine gem of the night brought to you as always by Peter Franklin Jewelers. And yeah, you guessed it. We're going down to the courtyard. We're talking about Josh Arntz hammering home the touchdown with 49 seconds left to give Columbia City a 25 to 24 one point win over Norwell in the game of the week that may very well have been the game of the season thus far. It's Josh Arntz with the gem of the night for the Eagles tip of the cap to bet Brett Fox and company. Next week, first round of sectionals, 6A and 5A have a bye. Columbia City at Wayne and East Noble at Angola in 4A. You see the schedule there. We will have it covered for you right here next Friday on The Zone. For Josh, I'm Glenn. We'll see you next week.